Hi, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Pink Sheet, Script and Invivo. We're here at the Biotech Showcase 2018, a meeting that runs parallel with the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference, uh, which is sort of the traditional kickoff meeting for pharmaceutical industry, where they meet up with biotech companies, with investors, where they discuss some of the sort of key topics and the key issues that the industry faces, but also some opportunity for them to you know, share the progress that they're making and also start negotiations for the kind of deals that they, they may, they will, might like to create. Um, one of the you know, interesting areas or um, that is actually sort of, uh, has come to fruition uh, in recent years is the interest in uh, an indication called NASH. I'm, I'm joined by uh, Jeff Junker, who's the president of uh, NGM Bio, a San Francisco-based, uh, you describe it as an old school yes, uh, sort yes. of you know, biotech company. Yeah. Um, you, you've got an interest in, in, in the NASH space. I, I guess the first question is, uh, you know, why all of a sudden are we seeing all this interest in NASH? So I think it's, it's, a, it's a, a handful of different confluences that are sort of driving this. The first is that we largely solved the hep C issue. And so NASH is actually going to replace hep C as the leading cause of liver transplant. Yeah. So that it's becoming a real health cost and a real issue for a lot of people. The other is that the primary reasons people end up with NASH is obesity and diabetes. And I don't need to tell you about how much that's going uh, to drive the population's health issues in, in America. And so it's, it's one of these conditions that is actually affecting a stunning number of Americans already. Yeah. And you know the predictions about where it's going to go in the future are you know within a few different polls but tens of millions of Americans will have NASH. And so um, I think it is in some ways an indication that came out of nowhere. It really wasn't something that a lot of people were focused on. Um, and with the attention now on the sort of novel, you know, kind of mechanisms that have begun to be understood about it, it's opening up an indication of a pretty substantial size to, you know, to the industry in a way that people had anticipated. Uh, and, and consequently, there's a lot of people now sort of, you know, focusing on that space. So in such a crowded environment, yeah, how do you how do you differentiate yourself? What 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 is the NGM bio approach? Yeah, well, so we 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 approach every program in the same way, which is to say we're looking for novel biology. We actually do our own discovery work in our labs, where we're trying to come up with insights into particular biology that nobody else has, and then we are pursuing those with biologics we discover and invent within our own walls. Um, so we think that part of what we're trying to do is really have a very powerful impact on disease. And if we do that, we're not so concerned about the competition. I think that that is to say, um, if you have a novel angle and you have a really significant impact in a disease modifying way, I think the market has shown that those generally become drugs and they generally have a decent market share. So it, it, you know, in Nash in particular, I guess our strategy would be this. We have a hormone. It is the only particular program in the industry, and for IP reasons, it will be the only program in the industry for many years to come. FGF19 is what it is an analog of. And if you're familiar with the FXR agonist, um, intercepts OCA example, um, it is actually one of the primary mechanisms that those drugs are modulated. We are sort of the hammer coming on that particular hormone, whereas they're kind of tickling it upstream in a way that's not as, as powerful. So we have a very potent agent. We think that actually is the differentiating factor. Right, okay, so where are you actually in, in, in the sort of the development? Because there, there are sort of your know, products that are... Phase three, all, yep. Getting close to getting approval. So, so where are you in your, your development? So we're in phase two right now. Um, we have reported data just this last year out of a uh, significant 12-week study that showed best in industry as far as you can tell from imaging by MRI and from biomarkers. Now, biopsy is the coin of the realm. You really need to be able to show histologically that you're improving the organ. Um, and so we actually have begun a histology cohort, and that data will be reporting out relatively soon here this year. So once we see that, we need to have some conversations probably with the agency and see what kind of expectations they have. But um, we'd certainly be trying to move into phase three as soon as we can. And so uh, how quickly kind of depends on the data and depends on those regulatory conversations. And you're doing this on your own? We are. Um, so we have a very large partnership with Merck, um, which we're incredibly grateful for. It's been around for about three years. And all of our R&D in many ways is being supported by Merck. Um, and they have some option rights, and so we have a, that deal has been reported on in the past. But in those negotiations, we were fortunate enough to keep the lead program out of that collaboration. And we have wholly owned rights to that worldwide. So at the moment, we're doing it alone. Um, you know, it is a big indication. That's another reason people are interested in it. So 
as we look at phase three, we're going to have to think about what the right strategy is. We're prepared to do it by ourselves, but you know, there certainly might be some wisdom in thinking about partnering with that one. So, so NGM 282, which is the, how you? FGF19 analog, so it's a, it's a hormone analog, yeah. yeah. So, so that at the moment, as you sort of say, you're, 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 you're pushing forward with that. Who else has financed N NGM Bio? Yeah. So we have been uh, very, very fortunately financed by a great group of venture capitalists. The Column Group is one of the lead investors. Merck obviously has a significant stake. Row Ventures, Prospect Ventures, we also have Top Spin. Um, and then we have a number of really good supportive uh, folks from a number of different uh, you know, kind of sovereign wealth and private individuals. Um, it takes a village, right? Especially if you're a 10-year-old biotech company that's still private. Um, big support, so. So, okay, so. You know, the sort of the, sort of the Nash space, you know, again, you know, people are sort of like, you know, sort of tackling in different ways. When you're, you know, talking to potential partners or investors, I mean, what, what, what is the sort of the key, yeah. key approach that you're taking yeah. that you think, again, will, will differentiate? Yeah. So, you know, hormones are really fascinating because they play very important roles in our bodies at very low levels. And we all have them, and they're, they're, they're mostly there to create a homeostatic state. Sometimes it's to kick off new processes. Um, you need to grow, right, as a child, or you're entering puberty and you need to develop sexually. And so there's different aspects of our bodies that are triggered by hormones, but a lot of the day-to-day -day hormones are there to kind of maintain just a healthy norm. It looks like FGF19 may be one of the more important hormones in just maintaining good liver health. And so what we see at 12 weeks is, you know, these people have a, ten, a, a tremendous amount of fat in their livers. Um, you and I hopefully are very healthy livers, and that would mean less than 5% ha of, of, of the liver is fat content. NASH patients, it's 15, 20, even 25%. Um, that's a foie gras kind of liver, right? I mean, they really are not in good shape. Um, they also have a lot of inflammation. And over time, they also get fibrosis. That's what leads to cirrhosis and liver transplant. But what we see is even just in the 12 weeks that we treat, we're able to bring that liver fat down from 15, 20, or more percent down into the healthy normal range. We take the elevated liver enzymes, which are signs of inflammation, snap that dose back down to normal. And so what this hormone seems to be doing at that sort of pharmacological dose is it is pushing the liver back towards the normal position that the body wants it to be in. But because of the sort of obesity and diabetes and other factors that are driving the, the dysfunction in the liver, that is not happening. And so by kind of giving a boost to a natural mechanism uh, through FGF19, what we're doing is moving that where the organ wants to be. So, so in sort of the oncology space, we're seeing a lot of sort of you know, combination therapies yeah. because actually, you know, one size doesn't fit, fit all. Uh, are we going to sort of see the same in, in, in NASH? I mean, do you sort of foresee, again, combinations required? I, I think that there's certainly a, a contingent in the industry that thinks that's the way we're going to need to go. Um, Maybe another differentiating feature I haven't you know, put on the table is we believe that our therapy has the potential to be a monotherapy treatment. We're seeing enough activity across all the different fronts. Now, we need to see the biopsy data. That's you know, a, a sort of the, the, the kind of coin of the realm that will determine that. But part of the reason I think you're seeing combination studies is that people are finding that the activity of any one of these molecules is not enough. And so whether it's mechanistic or it's just end of the day, the outcome you're seeing, you need to maybe combine some. And that's been, frankly, that's been the play that has worked in hep C. Um, but I don't know that we believe it's necessary in NASH. Uh, at least with our drug, we have a, the confidence it could be a single agent treatment. So so the phase three would be as a, as a monotherapy? That's our, yeah, definitely that would be and our expectation. You're sort of hoping that's going to ha start sometime in 20 2018? I don't know. There's no way that it'll happen in 2018. We, we, we're still waiting for data. We're still needing to talk to the agency. Manufacturing, all the rest needs to happen. I, I think that best you could be looking at something that's maybe end of 19, early 20. But again, it's it's really early to say with, with any definition. Okay, so 2A2 obviously is going to be uh, you know, taking a lot of your so intellectual uh, uh, capacity, uh, thinking about you know what you need, what you guys need to do. What what other things though does NGM Bio have? I mean, because you sort of say you have the deal with Merck, so there must be assets associated with that deal. There are there are quite a few, and actually we have two more programs entering the clinic, bringing us to a total of five uh, in the clinic. Another dozen or so programs behind that. I mean, again, it is kind of taking you back to an old school model of biotech in the sense that we're opportunistic about where we see openings in biology. And where we do, and they're connected to a big disease that doesn't have adequate uh, treatment, we go. And so we have about 100 scientists um, and researchers working at NGM. Uh, and so actually, 
virtually none of them are working on 282. So yes, it's a management distraction, and it's certainly a focus for our clinical team to be working on 282, but the vast majority of the companies actually work on other projects. Um, and the great thing about the Merck deal was what they did was they gave us enough capital, it's going to work out to almost half a billion dollars over a five-year period, to run this engine at full throttle. And so whereas a smaller company that was working on venture dollars, we'd have to probably be very selective about which things to work on. With that Merck money, um, we probably have a dozen teams of maybe four to six people that are working on, you know, kind of sky's the limit projects. So metabolic disease, obesity, diabetes, we're working on those. We had two papers published last year on novel hormones that we identified. So that's a good example of kind of the biology that we're talking about. We're moving into oncology. Our first oncology program will be going into humans this month. Um, we're also looking at areas including cardiovascular disease, ophthalmology, um, neurology, uh, it, you know, it, wherever we see biology opportunity. So, so a lot of biotech companies tend to focus in, in one narrowly, space, yeah, whereas yeah. your um, you know, much more sort of yeah, Catholic yeah. Uh, view of, of, yeah. of, of what's going yeah. on. So, so what, is, what is the business model that you're, you're pursuing? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, that what we would say is that you know, the drive towards a therapeutic area folks or a particular mechanism is, is largely to help fit into somebody else's portfolio, right? And so if your end game is, is generally to be acquired, then making it a nice sort of selective piece that can slot in somewhere very cleanly makes good sense. We're really trying to build a company for the long haul, and we think that you, if you focus too narrowly, you're probably going to place bets that maybe aren't the strongest ones, all things considered. And so our business model is powerful drugs. We're trying to get as many medicines to patients as we can that are going to tremendously change their health. And you, if you just focus in one disease area, you're probably going to end up with some lesser candidates or some lower quality uh, molecules. One of the reasons we are looking across so many therapeutic areas, it is hard, right? The, I mean, the, the field has been opening biology for decades now. And so to find areas where there are truly black boxes that nobody else has figured out is not easy, right? And so we're, we're finding it where we can, I think, is the short answer. But we believe that the business model, I guess, and it goes back to sort of the old days of biotech, if you come forward with a really powerful medicine that has a big impact on disease, um, it doesn't matter so much if you're in multiple disease areas. I mean, you look at Genentech, you look at IDEC, you look at Biogen, you look at a number of companies of early days, Amgen and others, they were spread across all kinds of therapeutic areas, and nobody, nobody thought twice about that. So it's, it's a revisiting the old FIPCO model yeah. of you know, a fully integrated pharmaceutical company? Yes, though, with, I think what, what's helping us is, I mean, don't, don't forget that most of those companies, I mean, go back to Genentech, they out licensed their first program, Insulin yeah. to Lilly, right? Um, and, and most of the companies did build through partnerships. So Merck is helping us to really establish a foundation. Uh, we're not in a race to build a late-stage development organization or a commercial organization, all in good time. I think for us, the hardest part is research, and we think we've got the best research team in the business. So keep keep that, that focus on that organization. That's our that's our core competency, and over time, we'll build out the other layers. Okay, and you know, to, to just like you know, to fi to finish up. Yep. So. JP Morgan, Biotech yeah. Showcase, yeah. it's an opportunity where people sort of you know, meet investors yeah. or, or, or potential partners. What, what's your sort of key focus or what do you hope to get out of this meeting? Yeah. So we are um, you know, certainly having conversations with investors. If we decide to go down the path of developing NGM 2A2 ourselves in phase three, um, that's going to be a big ticket uh, study. And while we have a couple hundred million in the bank right now, we'll probably need a fair bit more. And so that's one of the conversations we're having. We're also really interested in the China space. Um, so unfortunately, China's following America's habits in terms of eating and moving to a Western diet. They're seeing an explosion in diabetes. And that will necessarily prompt Nash. And so we're talking to some China investors and some China companies about what that opportunity is going to be. Um, and then a lot of it, frankly, right now is just trying to recruit, too. We're always looking for great people. Uh, and so part of the chance to be here and talking to everybody in the industry is, is having those conversations. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Well, well thanks for, for stopping by, Thank you so much Thank for having you. me. Really Thank you. Cheers. Bye.